Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Vincent Schwenk and this video is a part of the Maxon's University tutorial series where I created seven different videos where I'm explaining something from the Microsoft job and the specific video here is about how to set up your soft body dynamics and yeah, if you like it you can continue and watch everything on the university but let's directly start here, thanks. So hello everyone and welcome back to the soft body part. And therefore I'll have a quick look again into what I already prepared for you. So we want to replicate that. Cool. Then let's switch into the scene where we stopped last video. So let's get out of the camera and I don't want to see the camera all the time so therefore I will hide it for now. And to get everything started we need a floor. Nice. And the cool thing about a floor is that nothing can ever drop or fall or penetrate a floor. And that is really important with soft bodies because soft bodies sometimes tend to fall through the stuff. So, but on the floor, we need to obviously give a tag and therefore we go to simulation tag and then to collider body. Nice, then I'm selecting my three objects and just moving them a little bit up so they are not below the floor nicely. Then let's have a quick look at my default settings. I'm pressing command D on my keyboard and Let's have a look into dynamics and your default scene would have 1000 in here and I have zero. I like this workflow because then I can manually adjust my gravity. But in this scene now we don't have any gravity. So therefore I'll press shift C on my command line and I'll type in gravity and we'll just use this guy. And now we have gravity in the scene. But I already know that I had a lower gravity value because I wanted my objects to fly a little bit more. So I dropped the value down to 100. Nice. Then let's have a look back into my dynamic settings. And I have a smaller collision margin already here. And I will explain you what it means. Usually the default value is 1. And that means when two objects are colliding, Cinema is calculating a 1 cm margin with that collision. That works really well with bigger objects. But as you remember, our objects are fairly small. And therefore the collision margin of 1 is way too big and we need to drop that down to 0.1. So we are done with our dynamic settings here and then let's start to play around with soft bodies. Therefore I will quickly select my three blobby guys and I will right click them, go to simulation tag and go to soft bodies. Let's press save. Cool. And what I often like to do as a start is just go into the soft body settings and go down to your pressure settings and I want to type in a value and just see what happens, if the simulation runs, if everything is like nice. And I don't want to have too many frames, but also not too little, so I'll go to 80 frames and let's press play. And you can see everything is running nice and we have a frame rate of 2 seconds, which is obviously not that fast, but it's still quite good. Because also these objects are quite high res for a soft body simulation. And you can see we have a really nice start going on there. Great. Let's go back to frame zero and let's play around with the values. For now, I will just change all the values on all of the three guys and we will make them individual later. But one very important thing what we need to change is we need to talk about the energy because in my original simulation, the puff was very quick and this simulation is more like slow and this has to do with the dampening. The dampening is usually set to 20%, so 20% of the energy is drained out. And I don't nearly want any energy to be drained out, so I'll drop everything down to 1. And I know 1 is a really good value because, of course, I played around a lot with the scene to come up with my final design. And also one thing in general to keep in mind, often the value 0 doesn't work that good, so I would stick with 1. And let's quickly press play and see what is happening. You can see now everything is reacting way faster, so there's a lot more energy into the simulation. And it took only 20 frames to get this nice puff effect. Great, then let's talk a bit more values. So I want to drop down the structural value. So if I drop it down by 50%, the whole object can be deformed a bit more. And I also want to drop down the flexion springs a lot. 
So I'll drop them down to 5%. You can of course play around with the values as much as you want and each change will give you a different look. But I'll just go with the look which I liked most for my um, renderings there. And that was something like that. So going back to frame zero and pressing play. And you can see we have a lot of deformation going on and it feels really soft and squishy. And also the reaction is very fast. That's nice. Then let's go back to frame zero and I want to get a bit of variation in there. For example, this guy should behave a little bit more stiff. Therefore, I'll increase the structure and I'll also increase the shear. So this guy will remain a bit more in his usual shape. And let's say the top guy, for example, then he can be even more squishy and soft and round. And therefore, I'll drop both of the shear and the structure by 50% again. Let's press play and see how this behaves. And this looks already really nice. Cool. I will pause here, go back to frame zero. Then in my animation, what I did, um, these objects were, first of all, they were kind of still and didn't do anything. And then there came this reaction thing and then they started to inflate. We need to emulate that by using stiffness. And I'm using the value of 25. And let's say the first 10 frames, kind of nothing is happening. I give a keyframe to my stiffness. And also in the first frames, I don't want pressure. So I go down to zero again. And then we want a reaction at frame 10. So I'll give it like two frames to react. And therefore we need to put up all the stiffness and we need to put in back the pressure. And I think 10 was a really good value there. So then what I also did, I had this kind of chain reaction. So I would say this guy would start the reaction as a next thing my number two would like kick in and therefore I'll just select these keyframes and I'll, I'll move them a little bit to the right. And now doing the same with the third one. So moving it to the right. Now we have a hierarchy from one, two, three, where the reaction continues and place. Nice. So one is starting, two is following, three is following. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. Now what is very important to art direct your simulation, you will have to need to see it in real time. And you can see now we are only playing everything at a frame rate from two to three frames per second. Therefore we need to cache everything and it's quite easy. We just select the dynamic tag, go to cache, go to bake all. Nice. My simulation is already finished. And now you can see I have a really good frame rate from 60 frames. So what I'm seeing here is really real time. And then let's have a look back into our camera to see how the composition feels. And if this would be my whole frame, I obviously would need to move the camera a little bit around and move a bit to the back. Nice. At this point, what I also really like is just to give them a quick color. So I'm selecting this tree and into the display color, I turn it on and give them some bright yellow color, which was the color from the rendering. Nice. Ooh, and I think this looks really nice. The top one is really squishy and soft. The second one here is a bit more stiff and this guy is also behaving really nicely. Then we have got that going. Let me have a quick look back onto my film here. I also exactly worked like in the tutorial. I only simulated little pieces. For example, these three guys in the top or these three guys or these or these three and the advantage of that is if there is an error in the simulation, you don't have to simulate everything again and have to wait forever. You can only switch some parts and also it's really good to art direct. So if everything is baked, I can move my baked object around. And about that, to be able to move everything around, retime it perhaps or rescale it, we need to create a Lambics. And a Lambics are a really cool thing. So we have to select our three guys and then I'm right clicking here and at the very bottom, we have a thing called bake as a lambic. You can think about a lambic as a baked format, which will always like stay how it is. And that's really great. So therefore I will select my saved ones, my old ones, and I will hide them. And now we only have the lambics and I will show you, they are exactly the same. 
But the cool thing is, they are like really baked. So therefore, for example, I could play around with the scale. And you see, it's very nice to add direct later on in the composition. If they have to be bigger, that's so easy. Or if, let's first of all drop the scale down to 1.5. And later on, if we would say this animation is too slow or too fast, we can also retime it. Or I'll go to 50, so you will really see the effect. Now we're having a slow motion effect. And also what we can do, we can even retime the whole thing, which is also really nice. So I'll quickly show you that as well. I'm selecting the first keyframe here and I'm right clicking on it. And in the point type, I want an easy ease. So I don't want to have a ease start. I want to have a quick start and then at the end an ease out. So I would slightly emphasize the speed at the beginning. So everything runs faster in the first part and slower in the second part. And that even emphasizes the puff even more. Pam. Yep. A uh, little bit less perhaps, but I think that's exactly what we are going for. Nice. Cool. Then let's save here and continue in the next part.